Hi. My name is Mark Hasselbell. I'm a sound designer from Denmark. In this video, I'd like to showcase a particular approach to sound design I've been experimenting with, which involves using a Wacom drawing tablet to perform a feedback effects routing setup in Reaper. While some of this video might act as a light tutorial, the point is not necessarily for you to mimic or to get to a specific sound, but rather to create a setup or a framework for you to explore at your own pace, within your own tastes, needs and temperament. So I suggest you just try this setup with the plugins and the tools that you already own. I'll go through ways of setting up the tablet in Max MSP to be used with Reaper, give some examples along the way, and this is an overview of what we'll go through. Skip around as you please. We'll start by hooking up the Wacom tablet to Max and use it to send out MIDI CC messages to Reaper. Besides the license of Max, of course, what you will need first is Volker Böhm's S2M.Wacom external object. And depending on your system, you'll probably want the 2022 update. I will include a link in the description. Max does by standard have the human interface object called HI which allows you to use external controllers as input devices in Max, which we could theoretically just use as is, but I can't figure out how to disable the use of the tablet as a cursor using this approach, which means it is doubling as a functional mouse cursor at all times, which will get annoying really fast as you will click and drag windows and items around without wanting to. The S2M.Wacom external simply allows you to disable this cursor behavior with a single message. Let me quickly explain this simple patch. I have the S2M.Wacom external object created. You choose your tablet from the U menu list. You send the message poll to the object to start polling the input values. You send the message no pointer one to disable the use of the tablet input as a cursor. Note, the max window will have to be in focus when using the Wacom tablet. There is a message you can send to make sure it runs in the background at all times, but it doesn't quite work for me. Try it out for yourself. And you set the X, Y range, and I'll choose zero to one. From the appropriate outputs, I've routed the zero to one input values from the X and Y axis, as well as the pen pressure. I scale the values from their initial range to a zero to one twenty seven MIDI range, and then just send them out via the CTL out object to the MIDI controller ports 30, 31, and 32. I am sending it to the internal IAC MIDI driver bus, which is also where I will pull the MIDI data from inside of Reaper. But you are free to choose other controller numbers, devices, and ports. And there you go, we are sending out MIDI messages from the tablet via Max. If you want to check the MIDI connection, you can use Reaper's Reaper Control MIDI plugin, which has a simple MIDI activity monitor built in. Side note. For the task of outputting MIDI from the Wacom tablet, I personally like to use the audio programming environment Super Collider. I've set up a basic patch, which essentially does the same thing. I just like using Super Collider more and mostly use it out of habit. Benefit from doing it this way is that Super Collider automatically, upon connecting to the tablet, disables the cursor doubling function. Another substantial benefit is that Super Collider is free and open source, while Max requires a paid license. I won't go into more detail with setting up this super collider approach, but if you want to go down that route, get in touch and I'll send over the patch with a little bit of documentation. And now we are ready to set up the feedback effects routing system inside of Reaper. First few things you'll need to do is to create a new empty project, and then you go into project settings, advanced, and allow feedback in routing. Create two new tracks, one for the FX plugins and MIDI input, and one for recording the output. You then arm both tracks with record monitoring on. On the track that holds the FX chain, you want to go into the record input and choose the MIDI device you are sending the MIDI data to. In this case, it's the IAC driver bus. On the same track, you go into the routing settings and disable the send to master channel to make sure you're only listening to the output from the track that's recording the setup. And before actually feeding them into each other, I'd strongly recommend placing a few choice limiters, as this can and will get dangerously loud and clip if you do not try to control it. I usually place a limiter on the master track for monitoring purposes, and at least two on the feedback effects track. One is the very first plugin and one is the very last. And I'll be placing more as the effects chain grows, 
but it's all up to what works for you and your setup. Another useful thing is to add some kind of DC filter in the chain. I like to steeply roll off around 10-20 Hz with an EQ to prevent sub-frequency feedback stuff. Note that the EQ, depending on plugin and settings, also adds latency to the system, but more on this in a second. You then route one track into the other and then that track into the first. We have a static feedback loop. Side note. Since this is a digital feedback loop, the latency of the Reaper project and the latency of the individual plugins will influence the resulting sound a lot. In Reaper preferences, you can access the block size. Lower block size generally results in lower latency at the cost of higher CPU load. Depending on how much your system can handle, you'll need to experiment with what works for you. What we want now is a way to control the amount of feedback in the loop which we can simply do by adding a gain plugin and control that with one axis of the tablet. And I just place a gain plugin between the two limiters. Side note, to map a plugin parameter to a MIDI CC input, you click the parameter in the graphical interface. You go to param, MIDI link, CC, and choose your controller number. I've added the parameter modulation pop-up window to a keyboard shortcut, so I don't need to do this every single time. And by opening this particular window, you also get a percentage control over the offset and scaling, which is very useful for taming and fine tuning the MIDI control. I'll map the X axis to the game parameter, adjust the baseline value and scale it down so it doesn't necessarily add 60 dB of gain. And now we can control the amount of feedback in the system from the tablet. This is not terribly interesting or dynamic yet but the framework has been created. From here on out, I will not thoroughly go through single plugin instances, as that would be too dull to watch and too time consuming for me to go through. But I will quickly mention and showcase some of the things that I usually use. For reference, here are some types of plugins that I found to be very useful and fun for this setup. Pitch shifters. Reverbs, frequency shifting and ring modulators, delays, Filters. Generally anything that messes with time, frequency, phase, and stuff like that. It's all about trying to nudge the feedback in different directions, so try with whatever tools you have.
And that was all for now. Thank you very much for listening and watching. If you need anything in terms of guidance for the setup or want to test something out, get in touch and I'll try to help out. Take care. And goodbye.